yeah. look for tellable stories that are physically tellable, and from a plot point of view, that which is uh, at least pliable. trying to figure out this introduction for like an hour right now i do want to tell you thank you for pressing play on the first ever the life plot podcast with mario benitez and i guess i was trying to give you a good description of this i'll just be honest with you though uh this is a podcast i've been trying to launch for like the last three years i guess i've always just been uh too lazy to do the grunt work you know getting a website up throwing it on itunes just you know all the, th- all the stuff that you'll find tedious for some reason when you're lazy like myself. Um, another truth is is that I was only able to afford the mics and set up last week. So I'm doing this. <laughs> uh, what I wanted to do with the life plot was try to get different guests and like different fields of my interest, I guess. Things I find dope in life, um, like pursuing acting, film, writing, stand-up comedy, obviously. That's what I'm trying to do. Just music, dance, and everything in between, you know. Uh, I wanted to get to sit down with these different individuals and actually talk about more than just, like, their contributions to their different crafts, but, like, how they actually ended up down this journey and what caused them to stay down that path. Uh, it's kind of hard to give you a pretentious ass, like... Uh, description of it but <laughs> i mostly just want to sit down and have conversations you know and chop it up with people i find interesting um and the first guest i actually sat with was one fifth of the unusual culprits a team which i'm rocking with heavy uh, lee valentin is pursuing stand-up comedy he's been in the it field for 25 plus years he's a father and he's also just kind of like amongst our team he's like the older dude like that he gives advice about what he's learned in life pretty well, you know. He, he drops knowledge to, and you kind of see that in this conversation, you know. That's kind of where we got to, where I was able to pick his brain on like different, like, uh, different uh, occurrences that I've seen actually happen to relatives and other family members, but really see how it affected uh, somebody who's now later in life uh, pursuing comedy. Um, so yeah, thank you for actually listening to this, you know, and I hope you enjoy this conversation uh, and subscribe, you know, I hope this will just continue to get better. I know this will evolve. I'll probably say things people don't like. I'll probably say things people will like, but I hope that we can have a constructive uh, process over them or at least be funny. If you're going to shit on me, be funny. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, this is the conversation with Lee Valentin. Are you recording? Um, yeah. <laughs> I didn't want to tell you that, but we were recorded. So, yeah, this is the first one, having you sit down with me and shit. Uh, I can imagine this will evolve into something totally different at one point. This is me getting it started. I just wanted to make this a, a podcast about sitting down with people I, you know, my peers, people I admire, people I have questions for. And you're none of them, but. Right, right. <laughs> I don't know why you picked me for the first one. Like, uh, I thought it would be interesting, though, man. I do got some questions for you. I'm going to start off. This is going to be real deep. So how do you think we can find world peace? Now, <laughs> I recently found, I recently read a couple, actually, articles, dude, that you wrote on uh, Comedy Hype. Yeah. I thought it was pretty dope. Word, dude. word, word. Appreciate that, um, man. One was. Just you and my dad have read it so far. <laughs> Those are the only ones that retweeted it, right? <laughs> Probably uh, the same people that are going to listen to this. You <laughs> and my dad. <laughs> yeah, dad is my number one fan, yo. He don't even like you. <laughs> he don't, <laughs> he don't <even> say. <laughs> Yeah, I heard the podcast, but that other guy, he was <laughs> really special. <laughs> yeah, I wish he was my son. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know my pops be, so I'm looking for one. Yeah. <laughs> you can have one. You can yeah. have mine. That nigga owe me money. <laughs> my nigga left me with zero ninety nine in my life. <laughs> Word. <laughs> but um yeah, so I checked out these articles, man. I thought they actually had a lot of good information, yo. And what I found funny about it actually too was that the shit is written in your voice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because that's all I know how to write. Like, I don't know about sentence structure or anything like that. <laughs> I write how I talk. Yeah, so and yeah, this, this is delivered just like, but I think that's good because it, it gets to the point, like on paper. You're right. Like, 
it's a little aggressive sometimes. You feel like the, the even the paper's roasting you. That's, <laughs> that's kind of who I am, I guess. Like, yeah, yeah. And I'm, I'm you know, I, I, I come off as smart, but I'm not really that smart. So that's how <laughs> it comes across on the page, You've too. You've just been playing smart all these years? It's a hustle. <laughs> Being smart is a hustle, yo. <laughs> people think reverse about me. Well, actually, people think I'm dumb, too. Nah, I don't nah, believe... People, nah, people... I mean, you be talking about some shit. I start to walk away. When y'all be talking about that crazy space shit and science shit, I walk away. <laughs> I, I can't. Like, I like dropping that shit on people, though. Like, yeah, you read, though. That's the difference. I don't read shit. I don't read. I don't watch TV. I just know. I just know what's in front of me. Yeah, yeah. But that's cool. You live in your world. But I think that's because you're older, right? Like, no, I've always been dumb. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've always been like this. And, and I have bad memory, too. So it's not like... like if I read something, yeah. I'm probably not going to remember it. Yeah, I'm pretty good. Yo, I never thought I had a decent... I don't remember, like, important shit. I won't remember to take my insulin. Like, that's crazy. That's crazy, right? But, like, I'll remember some fucking bullshit fact about Galileo. Yeah. From all fucking... You're yeah, like a walking Snapple fact. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's Bottle what Bottle cap is. from... That's and you remember the weirdest shit. I'm like, why? Why? Who? Uh, I don't have brain space for that shit. That shit just registers for some reason. Other things, I'm like I said, like real important life shit. I'm just like, ah, you know what? Fuck that. Like, but that shit, I'm like, yo, that's cool, man. I'm gonna bring this up to some chick one day. Yeah. <laughs> then she's still not gonna give a fuck. If I make it, cause I forgot to take my insulin. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah just nose off or die. <laughs> Shoot it up, yo, mommy, hit me with that syringe, yo. I've actually had, I've actually, my ex had to one time pump me with in insulin. Butt? Nah, she nah, she hit me butt? in the stomach. Really? Yeah. Wow. She was mad scared though, but I got mad twisted. And I, I didn't. And you passed out. And I passed out. I was like, yo. But I was, I was drunk, man. I was drinking fucking like Brugal and wow. like and wow. that Mama Juana shit, shit, that real Dominican vampire shit, juice. Oh, you was trying to get real hard for her. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that shit had me. <laughs> that, that was in a muscle shirt ripping it off. Dog. You ever, you ever fake pass out and see what a girl do? Just oh, to, I should start doing that, right? See this bitch, and then yeah, see if she real with us. When I start convulsing, just wake up. Yeah. Like, you bitch, get the fuck out of my crib. You ain't gonna shoot me up. That's, yeah, that's how you know if your lady's real or not. You fake die. You gotta, you gotta shoot me up, does. mommy. Yeah. If she cries, she's a keeper. Yeah, right? I'm gonna do it anyway. Ah. That's like uh, Pulp Fiction. You ever see that film? I didn't see that flick. Oh, you gotta peep that shit. It's yeah. a crazy See, that's scene, another like. thing, man. I don't want, like, people, The Matrix and all, I don't know <laughs> nothing about that shit, me. That's oh. a good movies, though. You ain't into shit like that? Nah, that shit is trash. Nah, I like films like that, man. I'm nah. a nerd. I'm a film buff, too. I'm a nerd about shit, too. Because you, you into that shit. Like, you actually make films. That's yeah, the difference. I try to, the craft of it. But... But where was I? I digress. But on this article, man, I found a couple things that were pretty interesting to me, man. And one of them was actually where you where you talk about your friend goofing you. You started out uh, going to like comedy classes, right? Yeah, I took I took a class. It was actually my man, um, like a brother of mine. He's we're business partners now. He he said he wanted to write uh, a movie. Oh, cool. Uh, a comedy movie. So you want a screenplay, right? Yeah, yeah. whatever. But he was just like. <laughs> Yeah, I want to do that. I'm I'm gonna take this this writing class, and I was like, all right, because that's the type of person. And you you kind of like this too. We're kind of similar in that if somebody's doing something, you'll be down for them to do whatever. Yeah. You yeah, you try it out. Yeah, let's yeah, do it. Not? Whatever. So I did that. I paid. Motherfucker never paid. <laughs> oh, so he got you to drop the money. Yeah, first? yeah. So I paid. I was like, yo, I'm down. You know, I wanted to show him that I was down. So I paid. A year goes by, he still hasn't paid. And I was like, yo, I got this money in the street. Let me go, let me go That's try this. <laughs> yeah. yeah, let me let me go see what it does. Get that money back. And, and uh it was good though. Was yeah. that something like uh did you actually well you wrote about it too in this, but you were never really you never thought of yourself trying something like that, right? Or even like approaching comedy? I, I used to rhyme back in the day. Yeah. So that's kind of how it's started like so I was kind of like familiar with the stage and performing in front of people and stuff like that um so I was like oh this is this is nothing you know you didn't have that stage fright was yeah, yeah it wasn't yeah. it wasn't a big deal like kind of like you like you're a musician and you was just like yeah this is nothing for me it's natural yeah I came from that I came from the like band world and shit but even for me like transitioning from the band world because it was like there was five of us at one time so it was like yo if we sucked I have four other motherfuckers to blame. blame right. Yeah. Now like, it's just like if you suck, it's you. It's all you. Because yeah. everybody's looking at you. you yeah. Like, 
and like my band was really good, so they didn't even I didn't really matter that too much. I just had to jump around and yeah. scream and shit. So <laughs> we we were uh, we were okay um, in terms of rap. Like I was, I was trash. <laughs> but it it was early. You I was like, have been, you couldn't have been worse than the rappers these days, bro. Oh nah, I would be a fucking star. <laughs> these days, you <laughs> these days I'd be a star. Maybe. But I was, we were like eighteen. Lil Lee. 18, 20, yeah, it was, it, it, the names nowadays are crazy, but yeah, we were 18 through 20, and, you know, we were, we were coming up around the time that, like, we did shows with M.O.P. Oh, sick, sick. Around yeah, the time, real like, deal. Mob Deep was, was, was first popping, and we had, like, a Tribe Called Quest type of vibe. Oh, nice, Little nice. suburb dudes, and if, you know, f- people from that time, we saw them blow up, who, we did shows with them, like, around the time Fat Joe was starting out. So if we would have kept with it, who knows? Yeah. Or, or maybe I got out at the right time because I was just like, this is not for me. What dismantled that, though? Um, was it just like life, like usually? Yo, I, yeah, probably, man. I had a kid at the time. Mm-hmm. You know, I was the only one, so I was probably wasn't putting in as much effort as the other guys were. It was a three-man group. And uh, I, I would like to revisit that because I, I kind of don't know what happened. Yeah. But I would imagine that life got in the way. So anyway, fast forward, I'm like, this is not that it, not to sit, to disrespect the craft and be like, oh, this shit is easy. But yeah. I was like, yeah, I'm not scared. Yeah, yeah, you were actually it. doing it. Yeah, and, and it, was, it was like a transition. Comfort. Yeah, it was like a transition. So the class was like six weeks long at the end, you know, you get a graduation show. And as soon as I got up there, I had like 50 people Wow. there to come through to see me and it was f- it was awesome but it's a false realization because people are there they know you they understand your humor so you get those <laughs> you, yeah you get the laugh yeah that's my boy son <laughs> and when you the do it laugh. again and nobody's there to see you it's like wow this shit is for real the strange strangers is what is the real filter for you yeah you're like yo can i get in front of strangers and, and make, make them, them laugh like yeah and light a laugh yeah you know? yeah, yeah i don't care if they don't if they don't <laughs> like me just laugh you're good at that though man i think you stray away from that that to like to go in a i wish i could be that comic like i want i love I, I love the idea of going in a room and making motherfuckers uncomfortable, but other people laughing at everyone. Right. Like, just taking, like, I like roasting motherfuckers. It's, it's, old, it's confidence from old age, right? Because you don't really care what anybody thinks. Like, yeah. I'm good at my profession. You already like, took in your, your fucking uh, lumps. lumps and bruises. Yeah, like. I've already taken my lumps, man. I, I'm, I'm good at my profession in my day job, so that's, I'm confident in myself yeah. you know what I'm saying so going up on stage you really don't care although sometimes it's, you want people to laugh so that shit is frustrating and annoying Yeah, whatever. but I'm just like nobody kisses we're all gonna die is it worse when you get the to me I always find it bad when I'm like up there and I get like in a room of a good amount of people I only get like two people to laugh like those days I've bombed it, like I've still gotten a couple people to laugh, but just the the, the back laughter, the <laughs> yeah, that shit always made me feel like damn. I well, sh- I only perform in front of two people. So. <laughs> <laughs> selling out five seats. Yeah, we selling we out get McDonald's booths. So and you know it's still early in the game for us, man. Yeah, so. no, totally. Well, I, I consider myself. That's something that I find weird. I think I always I speak to you about this a lot, like how like ego gets in the way of people and I think people look at especially the social media game uh, people think that they're gonna blow up and some people can right within like two years like oh I'm gonna be on uh, con- I'm gonna have my Netflix no you're not yeah. like this shit takes work but in fairness to those people you have to be a little bit crazy to do this or anything different yeah that's true like we're humbled we we have we have a sense of humility you know but you need to be off your rocker to do this. <laughs> to get up and, and try to, to think that you can be good at this. <laughs> you know, later That's on, you find out, you kind of humble yourself and you find out, I need to check myself. Yeah. But you have to be somewhat crazy to, to, to think that you can be good at this. I guess it is a crazy thing to go up there and just fucking, to have people come on, try to come on board with your mind. But, like, what you're doing is really, you're trying to hit them with a laugh so that they keep going on to the next thought <laughs> right 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 you're yeah. only as good as your last laugh yeah yeah it's like i'm not gonna come with you on this journey until you make me laugh how do you actually like uh you're more of a when i listen to your stuff you're more kind of like not a one-liner 
you you lead people and you're like a three liner than punch yeah so in between two to three lines is a punch yeah sometimes a one line uh, how do you actually write those I can't write those for shit like I, I think of them sometimes but I can't like it doesn't I can't formulate it into anything bigger like I, for me I gotta take people on like these minutes long journeys some of my shit doesn't even like I got jokes you've heard them like uh I've got jokes that take like a minute to get to a big laugh. Right, right. And I'm like, you know, I know I'm doing good if I could drop it and everybody listens. Right. But it's just the pure silence. Like, does that make you uncomfortable that you feel like you need to get more laughs or? It's a combination of things, man. And it's funny that we we have, this is good, man. This is good. It's weird that you're sitting across from me with headphones. <laughs> I'm listening to music. Not even, <laughs> you're not even I'm listening. Gonna, <laughs> I'm in another combo right now. <laughs> this is weird because normally we chopping it up and shit. We're chopping it up now, but it's kind of different. But anyway, so nobody's listening and you guys can't see us. So <laughs> this is who cares? Live, dog. <laughs> uh, so it's interesting. So I think the way I kind of learned how to tell a joke is set up punch. All right. Right. And I'm not that intelligent, so it has to be quick. Right. It has to be. You know, and most of my jokes, all of my jokes are about me and my kid yeah. and just me, really, because I'm not smart enough to talk about anything else because I don't <laughs> care about anything else. So it's just like, yeah, I was with Your my kid. reality. Yeah, it, I was with my kid the other day and we did this. Yeah. This is what I think of this. There's, I'm trying to get a laugh there. So I think it's more so that I, I don't know, I'm scared that people might not might tune me out, so I have to hit him with a joke. Yeah. But I think it's more so I was taught, like, okay, set up, punch. Yeah, hit him, hit him off the bat. Yeah, like, yeah, one, yeah. two. And like, enough to explain, I guess, what it is that I'm like. I'm still trying to figure it out, bro. Yeah, yeah, we're all still trying. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's trying not to find rhythm and shit. If I had like the perfect template, I'd be good. But I'm, I don't, and I'm not. So it's just like, just make the motherfuckers laugh. What what I keep seeing from you that I think is fucking dope is uh is like you setting up people naturally. Like you can actually speak to motherfuckers on that mic into the crowd and take them down a, a different lane and then drop a joke on them that fits. Like I, personally, sometimes I can't do that. Like I could be quick witted with shit, but it got to be natural. It's like I can't lead people into my material. Like I don't know how I haven't really practiced that, but that's that's your lane, yeah. I but I, I think the thing is is that you're it's because and knowing you i think it's because your jokes how do you lead someone down a path of who's your favorite scientist let's yeah. say you know what i'm saying yeah, that's, that's difficult to do so your joke structure is different my joke is i have a girlfriend right and i see a couple together i'm like how long you guys been together oh two years i've been the girl with my girl four years here's a joke yeah you it's know the commonality so, right yeah, so you're that's, more of a every uh, I guess your jokes fit more into the every man synopsis. Right, right, right. So right. it's more like broader for different audiences. Yeah. You can actually touch on. It doesn't have to be skewed towards one right, direction right, or right. I, I can't wait for uh, uh, an Asian guy to be in. The, I'm just saying Asian because I'm looking at the full man you got. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I can't wait for an Asian guy to, to, to be in the building to then have a joke for that. Yeah. It's, it's almost like, okay, it's pretty common. Yeah. Because right? every, everybody has had, most of us have had a girlfriend or have been in a relationship, you know, so that's kind of like yeah. my thing. So it's a little bit easier for me because... If you have kids, I can tell that you have kids. And there goes my joke. You see the, the withered down face? Yeah, yeah. I see old <laughs> dudes just looking at me like, uh, oh, God, yeah. please make me laugh. Get me out of my reality. <laughs> or you, tell me something about, you know, something that I, I have in common with you. Right? Yeah. Actually, uh, I, want, I wanted to ask you about, like, how, how do you find balancing fatherhood, a career, and pursuing, like, actively comedy? Um, like, because I can't balance... I have trouble right now, and you know, and you're fucking like uh, wifed up basically. So yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like uh, yeah. How how do you juggle that? Is it like is it strenuous or no? Luckily, I have people who love me. The yeah. first thing is um, to have a good child custody parenting time agreement. Yeah, yeah. And let the mother win. 
<laughs> you act like you're sad. Like, damn, I'm going to get him. One I'm only week. going to get him twice a month. Are you kidding me? How can this possibly happen? So that kind of takes care of itself, right? Um, even though, obviously, I want to see my kid. It's my favorite thing in the world. But, you know, he's with his mother most of the time. And, you know, I kind of work my – when I do have him, I either bring him with me or I work my schedule around it. Um, f- in terms of my lady – you know, she knows that Wednesday is her day. It's just for her. I'm not doing anything in yeah, comedy. And the then undivided. Yeah, I'd be like, yo, you know what to do. No, yeah. That's so not true. She's not going to hear this, so it doesn't matter. But on the other time, she, you know, she's always there. Yeah. Um, she's always with me. So when we have a show, when we're doing something, she's always there. And if she's not there, she I'm going to see her right afterwards. Yeah. Um, so that. So you have good support structure. Yeah, that's for, what for it's what about. You're actually trying for to everything do. that I've ever done, bro. It's yeah. amazing. Like my dad is. I was raised by my dad, which I have jokes about, and I live with him now. So he's been there through f- through everything with yeah. me. Like that's my my man, 150 grand, right? So that's kind of like he's always going to be around, and you know I'm trying to do the same for my son but i've been blessed with having those people in my life who support me and are a steady base yeah 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 which i feel like that like a steady base like having people that look out for you i've gotten that from family and friends like and like you know i've screwed up most of my relationships (laughs) but that's on me you know what i'm saying but um they weren't for you yeah well yeah it's just my last relationship was actually pretty good but i just wasn't happy with life and like mm. it, and it was and and me actually leaving a dope girl helped me find comedy which is kind of like it was like this turbulent time for me where I'm, I was kind of like in limbo like right. the band was done and then I saw myself with this dope girl I was like oh man am I just gonna have a kid and then this is gonna be right. me and right. then like you know I, it scared the fuck out of yeah, me yeah yeah and you know I, I gave up a good girl for it but you know I, I bowed out honorably you know good try to keep it real and shit and, um, that's all we could do man. Yeah. You probably left her better off for the next person. Yeah, I didn't, you know. And you're better for it, too. Yeah. Because you found something that you love to do, and you don't have to pay child support. Yeah, exactly. I wasn't just trying to be wifed up. Right. Actually, uh, with your kid, with your son, uh, does he actually know you actually pursuing comedy and shit? Um, he's been to a couple of my shows. Oh, six. six. Yeah, he's he, like uh, he's older, right? Like he's 13, gonna be twelve, man. Oh, he's yeah, nice, he's gonna nice. be twelve. So he thinks he's funnier than me, and he tells <laughs> he me all the time. Is, he is. <laughs> he tells me all the time, and uh, but lately he's been like, "Yo, are you famous yet?" I was like, "I'm not even famous in this house, dude." <laughs> so no, I'm not. But he, yeah, he's aware, and he knows that I tell jokes about him, and you know, that's cool. He, he's cool with it. It's He's a, cool with it. Is he open to does, does he have like understanding how big comedy actually is? Nah, like, he don't care. Yeah, he does. Yeah, he's a kid, so he's in his yo, own world. He does not care. He's a. Uh, he's like, yo, go do your comedy thing. The other day though, I left him. We had the show, the 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 stand up show. Yeah. Um, late night laughs, unusual culprits. We rocking. Follow us, holla. <laughs> <laughs> so I had to leave him with, um, you know, with my brother and his wife and. Uh, you know, he was like, oh, word, you leaving me for comedy? That's what you're doing? <laughs> this is supposed to be our weekend together? So he made me kind of feel, I didn't care. Because <laughs> I knew I was going to see him the next day. But he was trying to, like, guilt me into into chilling with him, I guess. But I was like, dude, it's 11 o'clock. Go to bed. Yeah, yeah. But, you uh, got, like, 20 minutes left anyway. Yeah, yeah. So he, he was, he's cool with it. Yeah, he's cool. He don't, he don't care, but he's cool. He's cool with it. Did you... um? Your your son is from a previous marriage, right? Yeah, from my ex. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. How like uh so uh, my brother, I saw him go through like a crazy ass divorce. You know, that was like my the close other than TV and shit. You always like, but that was the closest thing I saw. That was just like, wow, yeah. this is a pain in the ass. Do you feel like, I mean, now that you look back in hindsight from it, do you feel like that made you better now, or did it work out like? Yeah. What, did it what like lessons did you learn from that? Cause um, have faith. You can get through anything. Um, don't hold grudges. Um, it's best if you split amicably. But I learned a lot about myself. I learned a lot about the people who care about me. And I think looking back, it wasn't that bad. Yeah. It was good lessons learned, but it wasn't that bad. When man. you're in it, I imagine that when, shit feels yeah, like. Yeah, I was going through it. purgatory. I was, like, I was going 80s. through it. Like, I, I wrote on my IG the other day, I was like, yo, I was 
negative money in the bank account, had no food. But out of all of that, I had my lady who gave me a place to stay, you know, my man who would buy me groceries, my bro who bought me groceries and, and would pick me up and drop me off. And, you know, it's yeah, and my real dad. Love, yeah, unconditionally. So from what I thought was a terrible time was really like showing me that, yo, these people are really important in your life. Yeah. And you need to appreciate those people. So I'm grateful for everything. I'm grateful that it happened. I have zero regrets. Um, so, yeah, it was a tough experience at the time, but n it's not really that big of a deal, man. And that's that's why I try to encourage everybody, too. Yeah. I'm like, yo, don't get down on yourself. Don't feel bad about anything because it's temporary. Yeah, you can get out of almost man. Yeah. You can get out of anything, yeah, really. It's really you in your mind. It's crazy. It's really in your mind, man. And, you know, this, I'm not a... a, a speaker or motivational speaker or anything like that but I want everybody to know that if I can do it you can too yeah and you you don't have to suffer you don't have to worry you don't have to think that things are going to be bad because they're really not yeah, yeah. and it's <coughs> like uh I think like uh it, what scares me actually personally about like the marriage idea was always that uh was like having like to sit down with lawyers and shit like and it's like you having these third parties that don't know shit about you, and they're and like you got to go in front of judges too sometimes, right? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And they judging you, yeah, <laughs> like yeah, yeah, literally, yeah. like that just scares the fuck about it. like I, like marriage seems cool to me for the idea of like yo we love each other let's be together for the rest of our lives, mm -hmm. even though I, I think it's far fetched now because of like the advent of like social media and everything people got too much temptation now, like. But like that that point where it's like that breakup point is not just you two breaking up and making an agreement. It's like yo, you got to bring in lawyers, judges, split things, I, and like yeah, paperwork. You know what? Here's <clears throat> excuse me. Here's the thing of that <clears throat> most guys don't know about doing that, <clears throat> and it's not really that bad. Yeah, the best thing to do is when you feel like you and your partner are no longer compatible, what you should do is talk about it amicably. Yeah. Right? And don't wait till one person is mad at the other. So speak about it amicably, amicably communicate, and a lot of us don't do that. Nah, that's people. You have to let things build up most <clears throat> right, of the time. Right, right. And I was one of those people, uh, which I don't do that anymore. You got to communicate, um, come to an understanding, come to an agreement, and the rest of it will be much easier. Yeah. So yes, there may be lawyers involved, but you can get through it with just one lawyer who's a mediator. It won't cost as much, and you know everything will be pretty simple going down the line. If you meet in front of judges, they're fair. Yeah. We only have it in our head from stories that we've seen, yeah, things that we've I've heard, seen, TV. Seen that nigga dead presidents be right. life. Right. Life. You don't see that movie, but you should watch that movie. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the thing, too, is it's perception. No, they're fair. If you and your lady make equal amounts of money, that money is going to go. They're going to split it up. They have something that some calculations, you know, and you, it's really for the kid. Yeah, you got to yeah. get over like, yo, I'm not giving her anything and this, that and the other thing. Oh, it's really for the kid. The yeah. child. Yeah, I gave up yeah. the house. You know, all the, the money I put into it, all the work, it doesn't matter. My kid is has a home. Yeah. <clears throat> that money that I <clears throat> damn that money that I give her is for my kid. She could do whatever it is that she wants. Just know that I'm taking care of what I'm yeah, supposed you take to take care of. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You do. It's hard to see that money lead a paycheck because <laughs> they, they don't play, they take it direct from the paycheck. Straight from it, right? Yeah, it's like they double Put dipping. Shit on hold. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, and for a you while they a, was you taking get a everything. Stand job, nigga. Yeah, they for a while they was taking everything. Wow, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. and they, you know the thought came across like we gonna have to go hand in hand. Yeah, you know, but I luckily I didn't, and it it worked out, and yeah. every, everybody's better for it. You know, that's the most important thing. Shit, I'm gonna get married and then get divorced. Yeah. Nah, nah. <laughs> well, nah I'm not. You you, nah. you hope that it's forever. Yeah, right? yeah, like my lady now, I'm definitely getting married again yeah. to this woman. That, all right, that doesn't scare you at all? Nah, why? Uh, I mean, yeah, you, you actually... I've already you, been through it. It's not that you, bad. Do you feel like uh, now you appreciate a relationship differently than I, you did before with your wife? Yeah, because I, I never knew 
what real love was. Like I know love for my dad, I know love for my kid, but in a relationship, you know, with another grown person, you know, that is something completely different. Like there's n there's no there's no hidden agenda. Yeah. This person loves you just as you are and is there to help you and that's love and I'm like this is possible it's being real transparent with one another yeah, right yeah. Like, yeah and this woman has taught me and again she's not gonna hear this but <laughs> she's taught me so much not only about myself but about patience understanding which has helped me with my kid which has helped to help me deal with things at work which has helped me to deal with things just in life in general like, that's my code D for real. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? And that's why I feel comfortable bringing her in anywhere with yeah, me. Yeah, and she's ride always or die. With, Yeah, she's always with me. Now, who knows? Later on, it might not be so good, but I'm not, I don't care about that, you know, because we'll handle it when that time comes. But for right now, it's been four years. That's my. Yeah, she's. Uh, that's my. Yeah, she's really your ride or die, yeah, which, is, yeah, yeah, which is good. Yeah. yeah. I, I think that's like another example of having to go through like, like what we were talking about before, going through like the bottom to see the real appreciation of Appreciate them. Appreciate everything, like, man. Most failures will show you how to succeed, you know? Right. Like, uh, a lot of people don't see that at the time because when you're in it, it's you in it. Like, yeah. Like, you're I, going, you can't see anything. You see red. Uh, yeah. You're, you're, you know, peripherals are... Right. You have tunnel vision. Yeah. And it's like, uh, it's real daunting, you know, certain things. Like, that shit could bring certain events, uh, relationships, and just failures at work. All this shit just brings people down yeah. usually. But yeah. if you shrug, if if you dust it off your shoulder, man, that shit is gonna pass. You don't even think about it. Do you feel like uh, now that you're doing more comedy, do you feel like that's an outlet to get anything mm -hmm. off your shoulder? No. Like no, nah? that doesn't help. It helps me sometimes, but I could go up there and just it just let off all my thoughts on people and let me just drown drown them out with this <laughs> like. Comedy is the worst part of my life right now. <laughs> it's the worst. It's the worst thing. No, because you, uh, you want to be. We want to be good at it. Yeah. Right. And we're not going to be good at it for a long time. Yeah. I'm, I, me personally, I'm saying me personally, I'm not going to nah, be good me at too. it I, for a I long got time. A lot of work to do. Like. And it, and I I look like at my career right because I have my career in place. I've done this for 15, 20 years, and it took me, you know. 10, 13 years to get to where I am now. Yeah. Right? Which is I'm at the top of my profession, so to speak. So knowing that is what helps me with comedy. It's frustrating, though. Yeah. So do you, um, so like you basically like judge your rate. What, well, actually, what do you do for work? I'm a network engineer. You're a network engineer, yeah. right? Um, so you've been doing that for how long, you said? I've been in IT in the business. I started from the bottom. It's yeah. like well, I started when they were using uh, typewriters. <laughs> I started with the Commodore sixty four when I was a kid. Yeah. But it's be, it's always been a hobby of mine. That's why for me the 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 climb, so to speak, wasn't that bad because it's something that I've always been interested in. And I'm not that bright, but again, it's a hustle. Yeah, it's like I saw this way to make some bread let me figure out how to maneuver in this IT thing and I happen to like it and just you know use that as my hustle so like you already have uh, an idea of putting work into one field and seeing like the growth exponentially how do you feel actually about like your growth even though it's not very long so far in comedy but how do you feel judging yourself amongst people starting around the same like I, I can't I can't judge that because a lot of people are popping who were who were came in around the same time. You're like so what? Four years three, in? Three, three. It'll be four later on this year. Yeah, the same as me. Um, so yeah, a lot of people are doing good, but I can't compare myself because I got a kid, I got a lady. Yeah, it's you not know, just I got a what job. you're doing. Right, it's not all that I'm doing. So, and I'm a lot older than everybody too, so I can't really compare myself to those to those people. I feel pretty like. Uh, I don't feel good about it. To answer your question, <laughs> you know? nah, I don't feel good about my progress at all. I don't know because we we've done a lot of shows together and shit, and like you know we've been uh, you know with unusual culprits. We've been bringing together like what I think is dope because like before I was really like fucking around with the team like that. You know I was branching out to do other shows and I was seeing the scenes and stuff, and I would think like getting out on my own and seeing other shows. I feel like we were 
and I think it's a collective thing. Like we were able, and even still, we're still kind of drawing from what we 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 were each doing at our shows. Yeah, yeah. Like it's and it's making us come together. And when we put like say Stand Up New York together, right. we're able to come deliver like a, a better package. You know. Yeah. So I'm like, when I originally started, like I, I've been, I'm always real hard on myself. Like I didn't. We have that in common too. Yeah. Like I didn't even st- I didn't dare try to step foot at a show for like a year. I had I wanted to make sure I had like good ten minutes that I thought was getting laughs before I tried to do five anywhere. Right. I was like, yo, maybe I should have 15. I don't want to disrespect nobody. I can't be getting in front of motherfuckers and not bringing anything. Well, is it because you didn't think it was good enough? Yeah. There's the humility, right? It's like we're, we're humble. We humble ourselves. But somebody else might be further ahead because they aren't their own worst critic. Yeah. Or the, and not not to put humility and being critical in the same sentence, but you, you're a humble dude, right? So you didn't want to go out there. But also, too, did you not want to fail? I yeah, that's what it, I wanted to be decent for just starting. I wanted to be able to go up there. But that's to you. Yeah. Because yeah, you're your own true. worst critic, right? So you're kind of in your own way. Is kind of. What I'm trying to say, yeah, like yeah. we're on our own, we're we're in our own way, we're stuck in our own, yeah, <laughs> our own rules, Cause, and guidelines, yeah, because nobody's stopping you from asking for shows, nobody's stopping you from doing a I terrible ten for, minutes. I, I could talk, I could ask friends, like, yo, you got a spot, but I will not ask a stranger. <laughs> I won't even ask people I know, you, and it's terrible. But, but you have to. I know, I know. It's just so hard. I don't like, do it, but I'm telling you that you <laughs> have to. I wouldn't. I'm I'm the same way. I, 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 I won't ask because I don't feel like I'm good enough. Yeah, I feel like I want to earn it. Like, like, and you know what it is? I, I don't, you earn things with different people differently. Like some of us, some people will like you to kiss their ass. There's people like that. There's people that want you to just be good and they'll offer you a spot or something. And I think that's like in life in general. But uh, I always get caught up in that like, yo, I want to be, you should make, pick me because I can make the show better. Like, I don't want to just be up there because of I asked or I pressured you or, like, to me, that's and that's always, I just, since I was in the band, I was like that. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm like, oh, you don't want my band playing? Fuck out of here, my man. Like, right, we, right. <laughs> yeah, you're going to make your own way. Yeah, that's how and I always. We have made our own way, but we also have to remember that now we have something to offer, too. Yeah. So you're exchanging spots like right now, like it's with, which is kind of what I wrote about, right? Like you have something to offer. You have spots to offer. Yeah. You have, okay, so you're not asking, you're trading. Yeah, that's you a, that's a better saying? idea to me. And people that don't know you, how are they going to call on you if they don't know about you? Yeah. If you're not putting yourself out there. Yeah, I, I got I to gotta do that more. Like I just get caught up in the – I feel like everything is so like ego-driven right now. Like look at our fucking president. Like, that shit is all, that man, he's everything wrong with, like, capitalism. He's all ego and a, and a dickhead. But like, you have to be and I can't that, be that sort of crazy to, to become president. Yeah, yeah. No, to you're do right. anything. To want to rule. You got to get to the point where you're ready to cut off your ear <laughs> to be good at something, <laughs> right? Vincent Van Gonzalez. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like, yeah. You got to be willing to do whatever it is to prove that you're good at something. Yeah, nah, that's true. That's you like, got to wig out like Kanye to be a genius, you know, how, sway. I've always, like, um, actually saw an interesting uh, actual clip that Jerron. Uh, I didn't see that clip he, yet. So Jerron Young, a fellow comic, he actually, an unusual culprit, he sent a clip of Bill Burr talking about his best advice. And uh, he said Dave Chappelle, like, told him, like, you know, uh, what you're doing uh, is going gonna, gonna to be. Going to pop. It's, it's going to take you a longer Long, time to yeah. pop, but when it does, it will. Yeah. And it's like, I always had that in my head, like, man, maybe if I could just do what I feel is worthwhile and, like, just stay the course and try to be as good as I can with what I want to deliver. That's it. Uh, maybe people will come along eventually. Right. And it's like, I felt like that with the band. I felt like that with the, with the comedy now. And, like, when I my little, like, short films and shit like that, I'm like, yo, let me just deliver what I think is dope and as harshly as I want to be on myself, maybe people will come, but I'm not going to be throwing it down nobody's face. I'll tell you this, and I tell this to my brother all the time. Everybody has their own lane, right? How many people in this world are there? Fucking seven billion. Seven billion, right? So if you had just 
one percent of one percent of that. Yeah, you Gucci. Yeah. So all you do is you put yourself out there. You do it long enough. You become better. You have your lane. There are millions of people who are just like you, who like the things that you like, who understand what it is that you understand in the way that you understand it. You just got to go out there, do your thing, and find those people. Yeah, they'll come to you. The people who are meant to come will come, right? Right. Put, put those blinders on, grind. Everything else that's not for you will move out of the way. That's the best way to do it, man. Um, Easier for, said, a lot harder. Right? Yeah, oh, yeah. A lot harder uh, to do. It's hard to practice that when you're in the midst of, of life. Right, <laughs> like, right, right. When you're going through it, you yeah. don't see anything but Like we red. said, those blinders, yeah, man. Yeah, It's like... Uh, I could give the best advice to people, but when you find me, I'm just some crazy, <laughs> mad, lonely, yeah, mad, angry, lonely, yeah, angry for <laughs> yeah. no reason. Like, why am I? Why do I care that children are starving? Like, <laughs> like I'm not your better. Like, <laughs> like, like I, as, you know, I beat myself down like that. That's how my mind works. That I'll put, you know, you I think put a lot too of much people, pressure. Yeah. Too much pressure, and I put things in my head that you create it. Yeah, and it's like. Uh, yeah, you totally created. I think a lot of people do that. What I'm learning about myself is that I'm trying to like, as I'm getting older now, I'm 31, and I'm like, Jeez, sure, to, baby. But I'm oh, getting older. My God. I'm starting to feel the aches, bro. Jesus <laughs> like, Christ, dude! If I was 31 again, I would have pulled out. <laughs> Jesus, I ain't pulling out no more. <laughs> I remember, I no more pull out. Good, good luck. Good luck with that, man. <laughs> Fucking splacking and everything. <laughs> <laughs> Watch out. Um, so I'm like, I'm trying to like, I've been learning more that you need to be just in control of what is tangible to yourself and what you can control. Because there's a lot of things like, especially like I, I go back to like the, the advent of fucking social media or Facebook. You can you can see uh, something that's that's horrible or something that really is like you should feel empathy for in another country now. And like that shit will, will, will ruin your day. Right. You're like, damn, but it, you know, but I'm not in motherfucking... I'm not in Asia or the Middle East right. or, you know, like I need to make, what I need to make better is what I can. What you have in front yeah. of you. Yeah. And I think that's kind of like, the, you see like how people try to like fight social justice battles online and shit. That shit is weird to me, man. And it's like, you know, the fight isn't really online like that. You're, you're arguing shit. Like the fight should be in person. I feel like that's something that I think is cool about stand up, right? You do like, you're delivering these, you're delivering parts of yourself. And, like, whether, you know, some comics do it more than others, that they deliver, like, their f personal philosophies and shit. Mm -hmm. So I feel like doing even that is more important than the social media shit. Because you're actually in people's faces trying to, you know, having this one-sided dialogue. You know, you're not there to get heckled or nothing. But you are playing around with trains of thoughts in people's faces. Right. I feel like people have lost that. Like, now it's like they're bringing all this extra shit on themselves that they really can't fix. Right. You know? And it's like, you see, I see it nonstop. You know, if you go online, like, you'll see arguments. I'm like, why are you arguing about this? Yeah. Like, and, and you're not you're not helping your community. Go fucking mentor a kid or some shit. Right. You know what I'm saying? Do one small thing. Yeah, that's all you can really do. do. And who knows? Maybe maybe they are. Yeah, and not to say that I'm sure yeah. there is, but more so than not, they're not. They're not, <laughs> yeah, because they're spending way too much time online. Yeah, they're being, gonna, and they, they're trying to get the, I think that's a mental thing, too. That's like a, Trying to get people on your side. Yeah, it's getting them on your side, trying to be right, and also just like, and it gives you that satisfaction in your mind, like, oh, I did something today, right? Like, which is which, which is, is bullshit. Weird. All you yeah. did was type on your dirty ass screen, and they're, they're <laughs> your, your yo, dusty fingernails. They're caping for somebody who doesn't give a shit about them. Yeah, regardless of who it is, right? Like they're super fanning for the, these people or these beliefs that. They don't even they give, don't a, really shit give about. a shit about. They don't really give a shit about. That bugs I, you me out. You got a bit like that. Yeah. Like, you, people don't really give a shit about you. Yeah. <laughs> they don't. <laughs> they don't. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? People don't. People don't even give a fuck about what directly affects them. Yeah. And, like, and, but what, like I said, even myself, like, and I'm one of them. I'm totally one of them. I'm not even front on that. Like, I will forget to take care of my health with diabetes, but I'll go out and try to help somebody else with something. And I'm like, oh. Like, I'm not even helping what I could help the easiest, right. which is myself. Yourself, yeah. So it's like that, it, that it's, constant. It's funny that you say that because earlier you said something about not being in a good space and you couldn't be a part of this relationship, but you had to help yourself 
first in order for you to be able to love that person yeah right and then for you to be able to share yourself with that person but you weren't right right so we have to get ourselves right yeah before, before you we can get, get anything else before right before you can get anything else and right. most of us are fucking wrong yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah and it's so it's okay to be wrong yeah that's and learning the learning yeah. process just don't be wrong on the internet <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> yeah, that's it right there man yo uh before we get out of here i just wanted to ask you i one. feel like we talked a lot but we didn't talk about we anything did, we no we talked about good stuff we did i, I think we I got guess we did we got a couple uh, sound clips i'm gonna put up somewhere yeah my dad is gonna uh, be proud of you your dad.com <laughs> 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 uh, one question that I, you know, I think I'm gonna ask everybody this because uh, I find it interesting. Um, is like, when do you find your mind the most at peace? Never. Never. Um, I try to meditate every day. Nice. And even then, it's it's difficult because I'm thinking about all the things that I should have done or that yeah. I should be doing. It's like anxiety, right? Almost. And I struggled with that for, I struggled with anxiety for a little while. And it started like as soon as I hit 40. Um, but yeah, I, my mind that, my mind is racing all the time and about nothing too. Yeah. About weird that stuff. That happens to me. Yeah. That's so like. I don't, I don't take any drugs or anything. I don't smoke. <laughs> I don't do any of that stuff. So it's just like, I zone, I zone out. But yeah, there's no real time. Even when I'm doing something like, in the gym, hitting the, the heavy bag, I'm still thinking about what I might have to do. Yeah, you know all, what I'm the, saying? all the the things are lined up next, right? It's like, why am I so bad at comedy? <laughs> why <laughs> am I throwing this ugly ass? Do I look weird throwing this left hand? <laughs> How should my feet be? You know what I'm saying? You're just thinking about things all the time. It's yeah. ridiculous. The mind is really never at peace, right? But I have been taking... Uh, uh, melatonin. Yeah. Yo, my dreams are insane. Oh, dude, that that helps if you take it constantly. Like five milligrams. I don't know how much it is, but I bought that shit the other day, and I I've taken melatonin before, but yeah. this one is bananas because I'm just I'm out, bro. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I guess that's when my mind is most at ease when I'm just sleeping, dude. You're sleeping and you're still dreaming. I'm of crazy dream, My shit. dreams <laughs> are so insane, bro. Those it's, are the best. It's man. just weird, man. The it's dream weird. world. Yeah. That, that's like. Peering. That's like peering into another universe, like, sometimes. Yeah. I, yo, dude, this... And talking to you sometimes, I'm like, yo, where do we come from? Is, <laughs> yeah. is this really a video game? Dude, uh, there's a... I got a... There's this good... Uh, uh, he's a mathematician. And like, uh, his name is uh, Jim Gates, right? I so, thought you were going to say some Puerto Rican name, like, <laughs> Jose... <laughs> yeah. Jose Don uh, Gonzalo. <laughs> like... Uh, but yeah, it's Jim Gates, yo. He actually, so this guy is like, when you hear him speak, he sounds so out there because he's like, he is out there, bro. This dude is like, he looks at numbers, like he looks at everything as numbers and shit. Wow. So, uh, but within, there's this, thi there's this thing called string theory, which is like uh, the only theory that encompasses all of our knowledge so far of the natural world. So our knowledge of gravity, quantum mechanics, it's the only thing that makes sense, right? And within string theory, my man found computer codes and self-correcting codes that are much like uh, computer programs, mm -hmm. programming, like zeros and ones. And he's like, yo, this, this, uh, it looks like, he's like, he's like it, our universe, our reality can be described as computer programming, really? like a simulation. He's, he says it, he's like, I'm not saying that this is what it is. He's like, but it can be described as a simulation wow. of zeros and ones. That, wow. shit, like, that shit bugs me out because you're like, yo, am I some fucking somebody? Is somebody playing me right, right now? Right, right, right. Some little I, fucking dweeb. Like. And let me tell you, they're doing a shitty job. But yeah. he, yeah. His, I need the cheat code for yeah. money, dog. Like, Seriously, yeah. I need the cheat code for everything because I'm a terrible person. But here's, when, when you say all that, I think about at what point or am I still going to be around when there's realis realistic sex dolls. Yeah. Oh, dude. That's, Those are coming. Have you seen the new ones? I have. Have you seen the one? Yo, they got cakes and like. Yeah, but they're <laughs> still, they still look a little. But that's right now already. So give it like 10, 15 more years. I don't know. I, the price got to come down too. Yeah, they're a little expensive. Would you pipe one? <laughs> nah. Because uh, there's a, there's, nah. I, th I think it would be cool to use as a girl as in a three-way. <laughs> he just said he would <laughs> off the mic <laughs> he 
he told me he just did. <laughs> and I'm admitting it that I would. I'd have a I'd have a threesome with one. <laughs> like yo, mommy, like, we want to bring this girl in on this. <laughs> yeah, you'd have, yeah. Imagine you introducing the doll to your your, your have girl a, to the doll. <laughs> I'd have my girl eat my muffin. That's insane, dude. That's just so muffin. insane, man. But yo, that's where we're heading at. It's kind of weird though that we're heading there. Kids are gonna kids are screwed, bro. They're all the have you ever put on the virtual reality PlayStation helmet? Yeah, but what's, helmet? what's wrong with it though? It's evolution, man. It's part of like it's weird to us because. It's gonna. What's weird to us is gonna be normal to them. I think, I think it is a natural part. I, I actually spoke to a, this girl not, not too long ago. She's actually studying like human evolution. And I was like, yeah, I feel like cyborgs are the next. You know how you see the the, the ape standing on the evolution chart. Mm -hmm. I feel like a robot is the next the motherfucker next from us. Yeah. And it makes so much sense because if you look at what like neuroscientists and shit are doing. They're trying to download our minds and all, like, everything that makes us ticks, all the neurons that fire off onto computers and shit. Mm. So I'm like, and then that makes me go, so if Jim Gates found this code and it looks like we're in a simulation and we're, as people, trying to put us ourselves in a simulation, why couldn't we be a simulation and a simulation and a simulation if that is the natural way of progression? progression. That's where we're yeah. going. So it's like... That shit bugs me the fuck out. I also yeah. smoke a lot of weed, if you can tell. That's, <laughs> yeah, that's why I don't read. <laughs> that I read a lot. I would, weed. I would lose my reading mind. Reading and weeding. I, I'd, be, I'd be paranoid. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> yeah. that's and I'd be like, oh my God, what is going on yeah. here? I'm just like, yo, whatever. It's, It'll be fine. <laughs> it will be fine, man. And yo, uh, I think that's how we're going to end it, man. Thank you for sitting yeah. down for me on the first one. Thank you this for having dope. me. This, uh, yeah, this is definitely, I thought it was going to be weird. I'm like, why did he pick me for the first one? It, it still is weird. I <laughs> <laughs> this shit is weird. But yo, congratulations. And I've been telling you for a long time to do this shit. Yeah, man. yeah, you're the been one who. Pushing, been pushing you because I, you know, I think you have something good and this is going to be good. So congratulations. I don't need to wish you luck because I'm going to see you tomorrow. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> thank you. you you're going to do all right, man. You're going to do good. That was motherfucking Lee Valentin. Appreciate y'all. Thank you for listening, yo. Thank you. Peace. Thank you, Lee's Pops. <laughs> <laughs>